Well, it's another late night with AI late to class and Flux 2 just got released and it's massive. Not just on size at 64GB for a BF16 but quality is up there on all the benchmarks, just slightly below Nano Banana 2. This is not just a text to image model but an image editing model with the allowance for multiple image references. So Flux mixed with Flux context. Now with my 16GB of VRAM I was getting out of memory errors even with the Q3GGUF because the text encoder is also a massive 18GB. So I put a virtual VRAM loader in the CompUI workflow and the results are amazing. In this video I'll show you how to install and configure Flux2 Dev and CompUI samples of text to image, image to image and multi image editing. This is the true open source nano banana copycat so stay watching if you think you can get this running on your own computer or cloud server. On the Black Forest Labs website, and we're going to skip a bit of stuff here and go to just what's new, multi-reference support, up to 10 images. We'll see which version does that, it's not the dev version, that only supports up to 6 images. Obviously photorealism, greater detail, sharper textures, better text rendering, and better prompt following, these are all the things we expect from it world knowledge so it's got better understanding of other things but let's have a look at this one resolutions up to four megapixels so this is what's really different here's the model versions here we're going to be using this dev model the 32 billion perimeter model above that you can get paid ones the flex model and then the pro version you can actually access them here if you want to try those out on the paid versions there's this klein model coming soon not too sure what that's going to be when it says size distilled so it might be a smaller model just to compete with the other things out there. We do need this Flux 2 VAE and I'll show you how to get that. Here's a sample of comparison using different steps so 6 steps, 20 steps and 50 steps. I've been using all of these 20 step versions but if you want to wait longer use the 50 steps and you'll get way better quality. The top bit here will show you how the text output will be way better using the 50 steps. Here's some benchmarks here versus Queen Image, Hongi Young Image and Flex 1. Got the text to image beats on all of those, single reference image and multi reference image so you can see how it's better on all of those. Down here it explains why it's better. To simplify that it's using the Mistral 3 24 billion perimeter model to get its understanding of the world, obviously combined with better quality model. If you haven't got Comfy Eye installed, come down to my video here on my channel and it's the best way to install Comfy Eye. It'll help you out for all my other tutorials. Now if you do have this and you know what you're doing, you might need to update ConfiUI and all the nodes using the manager or you can get poll because that's what I did in here. Go up to your ConfiUI folder and type in git pull and that will give you the latest version of ConfiUI. When you drag the workflow in there's only three things you need to download. First of all is the model itself, the Flux2 dev model. I'm using the Q3 and I'll show you the where to get that. Underneath that you need this big text encoder, the Mistral 3 Flux 2 FB8 version. And over here we're going to need the VAE, the Flux 2 VAE that I talked about before. I'll have the links in the comments to these, but I'm using this Q3 version which is 14.5 gigabyte. You could go up one, I'll probably try that later on and see if my computer handles it but it's working as it is. Now you don't have to use this guy's version. If you go over here, City96 also has GGUF versions. Click in here and you can see a list of those as well. And his Q3 is 16 gig. So it's just a different person quantizing the original model and they'll do it in different ways. So that's why you'll get different sizes. The next file we'll need is the Mistral 3 Flux 2 Safe Tensor. There's two versions here, obviously a bigger one can understand a bit more, but this is how it understands the images. Hopefully they bring out some quant versions of this soon, because then we could get this running on lower VRAM computers. Last file we need is this VAE, it's not very big at 336 megabytes. Once we've got these files, we come over to our ConfiUI models folder, put our VAE in our VAE folder, and we put our text encoder file in our clip folder, and we put our model, the actual... GGUF model in our Diffusion Models folder. Only other thing we need to know about is our width and height, the resolution. I've got that at 512 by 512, which isn't the greatest size, but I was just testing. 
you can push this higher, see how much your computer can handle. If you haven't got the VRAM, you'll get an out of memory error, but just give it a go. There's the prompt down there, I'll go over that in a minute. And over here's our sampling step. So I've got that at 20, as I showed you before. If you go up to 50, you get way better quality output. I've got my C just normal and it's random, so it'll change after each generation. So if I look at this here, I've just got to draw a picture of Nick and the fox from Judy and the Rabbit. Nick is wearing a pink Hawaiian shirt, etc. And it's a watercolor style. And I think that came out pretty good, pretty nice when you look at that and you zoom in for a 512 by 512. That's actually quite nice. So you might be wondering what's this mess up here. So this is if you're adding in other images. I've got this image over here. I've just put it way over the side just so that you can see there's the image there it comes in. And when you go over here and click that, that'll now allow you to have one image in. So this is for the image editing. And the same is for the other image. That comes in and we can click that if we want two images in. And if we want to add an extra one, we copy all of this process of nodes and we give our last one feeding in. So I'll show you how to do that later on. Here's my first test at photorealism. The prompt up here, a real 35-year-old woman photographed on a Sony, etc. And the quality on a 512 by 512 image is really good. Tried the sample soaking wet tiger prompt from the Flux2 website and look at this. This is a Q3. This is amazing. This is crazy how good this is. Here's my normal 1980s style cartoon of a cat walking down the street. Remember this is 512 by 512. Sci-fi robot. Dog reindeer. Surfing claymation chicken and a funny claymation Christmas scene. This is my first try at single image edit. So I've just got my photo here that I've used before and we load it through. It comes down here and it goes into this bit. So I've got to turn this top one on. I leave the other one closed off because that's if I upload a second image. And my prompt down here was make the woman in image one running in a field of flowers. So look at the result that's come out is really good. All right, so I'm just going to match those two together so you can see that. Now look at the facial structure there. This does an amazing job of this. Next, I did multi-image edits. So I turned both latents on here. It comes back there and goes back to the two images. So I've got this girl in her dress, which we've had before. And I've got the swimsuit here. And I wanted to see how well it would do that. Not just putting it on there, just like the fitting of it and round the skin and everything. So change the woman's dress in image one to the swimsuit in image two. Simple prompt. And let's have a look at the result of this. And it's done an amazing job. Let's just have a look if we get this image here and we map it over and see if it is the exact same swimsuit. Look at the lines here. This thing is just way better than Queen. It just does things a lot better. So back on the Flux2 website, I've gone on to the prompting guide page. And if we look down here, it's got this Jason style prompting guide. So you can see what's going on here, scene, and it describes that. Subjects, got the style, the color, the lighting. This is crazy, this control that you've got now. So let's have a look at this an example. I'm going to copy this prompt into Comfy UI, but this one is about a coffee mug and it's got stationary on surface, center, foreground, polished concrete surface. So it's got all these details here and you can just click copy here and it's good to go this into chat GPT or Google and ask it, hey, I want this style for all my prompts. Can you give me uh, some samples based on this JSON structure. So copy my JSON file into there and that's my result. You can do further editing with these JSON files such as adding a yellow cup and this one is changing the color of the steam coming off the cup and then you've got these hex color codes that you can add in. So these are amazing things that we've never used before. Look at the control you can have with this JSON file here and then the example prompt and look at this output. Just everything is just so precise as far as the text composition. This is how I did the thumbnail for the video. Here's the prompt there if you want to try that. And you've got this multi-language prompting too if you're from a different country. Look at this comic strip. It's got different sections here. Panel 1, 2, right? And you've got all the prompting here if you want to look at that and see how you can do that. 
photorealistic styles, you can explain the camera that you use and the focal length, etc. Here's their example of multi-reference image editing. Look at all these pieces here. And that's the final product. Now we can't do this on the dev model. The dev will only allow six, but the pro version will allow this. So Flux 2 also has prompt upscaling. So this makes your prompt better. Sort of like Magic Prompt and Ideogram, if you've used that product, where it adds more words in and more detail based on the small amount of words you've given it. Another page I want to show that I think is pretty cool is this Flux 2 image editing page. Now we've seen this first image here, but let's look at this one underneath. We've got all of these sort of items there. And it's got use these empty concrete space from the first image as a room, place all the furniture from the image in the space, and look at that. Now look at this real cool one. You've got this picture here with the people in it, and it's got replace the people in the image with the animals. Crazy. Here's another multi-image sample that we've seen before. This is sort of like Queen Image Edit or Flux Context Nano Banana. But we've got a very good result here. Look at the way it deals with colour. Change the colour of the gloves to the colour of the image too. So look at the result of that. Pose reference. Extract items off something. Look at the complexity here of putting in all these different input images and getting this. Here's your regulations on your sizing. Maximum 4 megapixel. Recommended as 2 megapixel. Another thing is the flex version is actually the maximum quality, best multi-reference accuracy and detail preservation. So I'm just going to add another image to this multi-image setup. Just copied the image and the scale image to total pixels node for a start. And then I'm going to link those two obviously. And next one is I'm going to copy one of these. Not the best way of doing it but I'll do it for now and just hook this up to over here. Copied one of these nodes and now I'm going to click this to there. Now I'm going to unplug this one, put it there, and plug this one to there so it's part of a chain. I've added this image here and I've changed the prompt to say and change the background to image 3. And here's these three images and that's the result of that which is really quite amazing. That's enough for me tonight so like, subscribe, watch all my old videos and we'll see you in the next one.